show. I, I don't know who Henson is. He seems to have his hand in a lot of things around here, but uh, I don't particularly know what that means. I don't want to play a game with rhymes. Please go and burnt all ring my time. I don't want to do it. Kermit, this is a stinking bug. Yes, isn't it terrific? Ow. No. Jim Henson and Sammy Davis Jr., two American originals. We'll pay tribute to their talents and their contributions tonight. When we return, we'll remember Muppets creator Jim Henson, who also died today at age 53. He was only 53 years old, and his passing today came as a complete surprise. New York Hospital announced that puppeteer Jim Henson had been admitted early Tuesday with what is described as galloping pneumonia. His condition had been untreated for at least three days, and early this morning at 1.30 Eastern Time, he died. To call Jim Henson a puppeteer comes nowhere near describing his accomplishment or the love, affection, and knowledge that his characters brought to millions throughout the world. Nightline correspondent Forrest Sawyer takes a look at Jim Henson's remarkable legacy. Look at all those people out there. Lots of people. But my friends, my friends were all gone. Well, I'm, I'm going to get them back. I'm going to get them back. Because the show's not dead as long as I believe in it. Uh, the friends of Mr. Henson have gathered here tonight to present our little tribute to Jim. Kermit the Frog was born 35 years ago from a marriage between Jim Henson's imagination and his mother's old green coat. Kermit was nothing more than a sock with two eyes wrapped around Henson's expressive hand. But he was the perfect foil for a man too shy for the limelight. Certainly with Kermit, there are areas that come out from him that, that I wouldn't particularly do. You know, he's just, he's a little more playful. He's a little less inhibited. What do you think of Wilkins coffee? I never tasted it. Now, what do you think of Wilkins? Henson's band of characters gradually evolved during the 1950s. Thank you very much, But their big break came in 1969, when the Children's Television Workshop asked Henson to help teach small children on a program to be called Sesame Street. One of the thoughts would be to create a character that the child could live through. And so Big Bird, in theory, is himself the child, you know, and we wanted to make this great, big, silly, awkward creature that would make the same kind of dumb mistakes that kids make. The show was a stunning success, and education was at the heart of all the fun. When one television news broadcast wanted to explain a difficult subject in an understandable way, it turned to the Muppets. Well, if you wanted to know the definition of the term market, or stock market, as we say, it, it's basically... But it was uh, still hard to convince some people that puppets are for adults, too. A primetime project was rejected by America's three networks and finally produced in Britain. The Muppet Show found a home in 106 countries. 235 million people watched every week. Even with that success, Henson had to take out an 8mm camera to prove the Muppets would work in a real film with real people, or even real cows. Kermit, in a character Henson found in the chorus line, Miss Piggy, became romantically entwined Hollywood stars. No, Miss Piggy, the moon doesn't look like you. Not all Henson's experiments were a success. He used high technology to design the gloomy worlds of the movies The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth. Audiences stayed away. But his technique, called animatronics, helped create today's popular characters. Henson began his career wanting to be an animator for Walt Disney. He ended it by selling Disney the rights to Kermit, Miss Piggy, Fozzie Bear, and other Muppets for more than $100 million. The money was to give him time for new experiments. 
and his campaign to help the environment. You can recycle a banana peel? Sure! Yeah! To find out how you can help, write to Make a Difference. If everybody had a nose across the USA. Jim Henson was called a creative genius so often, it became a kind of title. He leaves behind a body of work that will be discovered by new generations. The characters he created now have a life of their own. It's hard to say how much, how long they'll live. I, I think this is something that we're waiting to see from the audience. I, I think if the audience wants these characters to continue to live, they, they will. And if the audience gets tired of them, they'll probably go away. We've done just what we set out to do. This is Forrest Sawyer for Nightline in New York. And that's our report for tonight. Good night.